Hi everyone, I'm Nadine Nikhalo, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Internet of Nature podcast. I'm so glad you're here. This week, I'm thrilled to introduce you to not one, but two guests, Mark Boda and Willem de Feiter of Tree Collective, a truly innovative application of the Internet of Nature. They are exploring tokenizing trees. I know, tokenizing trees? For, these of the, for those of you that don't know, a token is a digital artifact that represents a metered resource. I know that's not really helpful. There are a variety of different benefits that you might get from issuing tokens and digitizing assets. For example, having assets be transferred transparently across international borders in seconds rather than days. Digital signing also ensures that these things that are tokenized can never be changed or forged. But for trees, tokenization is interesting because it allows digital ownership and history of that transaction. Using the blockchain, we can ensure tree tokens cannot be double spent while still enabling full, enabling full tree stability of assets as they evolve and change hands, like, for example, the ownership of a tree or perhaps the land that it's on. I know some of this might kind of go over your head at the moment, but it's it's something that Mark and Willem know a lot about, and it's something they've been thinking a lot about in the past several years. And this episode really kind of brings to light what these kind of buzzword technologies might mean for the tree world. And again, Mark and Willem explain this all much better than I ever could. Mark studied business econ economics before founding his current business innovation agency called BDA, which stands for Business Design Agency. And at BDA, he co-founded Tree Collective with Willem. And Willem is an urban forestry specialist with over 20 years of experience. Willem takes, urban forest, takes on urban forestry challenges all across Europe, and he has a knack for combining urban forestry with social art and innovation components, hence Tree Collective. But before we kick off, a big thank you to this season's sponsor, the International Society of Arboriculture. The ISA is a global network that uses research, technology, and education to promote the professional practice of arboriculture and the benefits of trees. ISA exists so that professionals, allied professionals, public officials, and consumers worldwide recognize the economic, environmental, and societal benefits and values of trees and their care. Hmm, if only they had a way to track this. Enter Tree Collective, perhaps? We want to thank ISA for their support. And as always, remember to subscribe and leave us a comment or review if you learned something new. Here's Mark and Willem to tell us more about Tree Collective. All right, Mark, Willem, thanks for joining me today. Hi, thanks for inviting us. Of course. Uh, so perhaps to kick us off, um, we'll start with you, Mark. Do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, Mark Boda. I'm from uh, Business Design Agency and uh, Tree Collective. And uh, together with uh, Willem, de Feit, Willem de Feiter, we uh, founded uh, Tree Collective a, com a couple of years ago to, uh, uh, yeah, to see if we can um, get the value of green uh, more out there and more well-known to, uh, to people. And uh, I'm here living in, working in uh, Rotterdam uh, at the Hofpijn center, uh, center of Rotterdam. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I am Willem, Willem de Feiter. And um, I am an urban forestry consultant and I work for different uh, con yeah, contracts. Uh, I work also for the city of Rotterdam and I found uh, Mark. Uh, who is a business developer and I'm an urban forest specialist and together we founded Tree Collective. And what is Tree Collective? Yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, good, Tree Collective we founded a couple of years ago to uh, to test if we can uh, make the value of trees more, uh, more tangible because we know that uh, uh, trees have more value uh, although at the time it was only well known to the people involved in uh, the green uh, business, so to speak, and uh, not so much out there. So we thought it must be uh, brought much more uh, out in the open that uh, the trees have more value than known to people. And that's um, how we first started to talk about uh, what are these uh, values of the trees and how can we make it more uh, tangible. 
And um, at the time, uh, I was also involved in an innovation agency that founded a lab for blockchain technology. And during lunch, we uh, talked about uh, uh, how, how can you distribute wealth or distribute ownership uh, while using uh, blockchain technology. And that's how uh, all the things came together. As Willem de Feiter, the, the Stadsbosvachter, City Forester, was also present. Uh, soon it came to how can we use this technology to have all the values that we found uh, together. Um, uh, how can you make, um, yeah, how can you have blockchain technology enable to change the, to distribute the ownership of, uh, of trees. So that's how it uh, all started at the table. I think at the lunch table in uh, in uh, Rotterdam, yeah. Where many, many great ideas come to fruition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Willem, from, from your perspective as an urban forester, why do you think it is that in 2021, almost 2022, we are still not valuing trees as we should? Uh, yeah, that's a big discussion. <laughs> that's also related to, yeah, uh, how do you value nature? Um, I think uh, uh, trees are a good example and a good starting point to, val to try to give some uh, value to nature. Um, the, the question is simple, or the, the, without nature, we don't survive. But how do you value that? Um, and with trees, it's a smaller, uh, yeah, you can make it more tangible because we can calculate some values of trees. And that's also the uh, why we started with trees. Um, why we don't already give the right value to trees in cities, that's uh, for me still a question what I, um, yeah, I'm working on, on all day. <laughs> Because um, yeah, I see tree uh, things do, doing with trees in cities that are yeah. Then you think what uh, trees uh, give to the city, what the value is. That um, yeah. Then then you start to wonder why are they doing this to the trees? Because what are what are some of these benefits that trees provide us that we should be valuing? Um, yeah. There are all kinds of benefits, um, and we, we know a lot of values like uh, the CO2 reduction because a, a, a tree uh, takes a, a CO2 and then... But you also have uh, benefits, in, especially in cities, uh, I think, uh, like the, the reduction of heat, the, the, the urban heat island effect, uh, the trees, they provide uh, some... Um, yeah, they, they provide the less heat in the city. Um, but the biggest values, I think, are the values that we as people uh, are more productive, more healthy in the when we are in the neighborhood of trees. That are the biggest values. Yeah, so those are the potentially biggest uh, values. Eh? So I think you have the ecosystem uh, benefits, uh, like Willem uh, mentioned a couple of them, like the CO2, the water retention, the heat reduction, that's all pretty well known. You can calculate that through the tools like iTree or T tape tool. Um, but then there are also a lot of benefits that are very site specific, uh, especially in, uh, in cities. So it can be health, it can be that you give provide shelter, a uh, more pleasant uh, working environment, more pleasant shopping environment that typically boosts uh, retail sales. So in cities, there's a whole lot of uh, values, but um, in my opinion, that research to the, uh, about the values is, uh, has come up to speed in recent years. So you find more and more studies that show the potential value of the trees. But the thing is that um, it's still very difficult to tap into the money streams, into the income streams, in the cash streams. And that's the next thing that we are working on is that we use the knowledge about uh, the values of the trees, scientific uh, uh, calculated uh, values, uh, and then try to, try, try to 
tap into the cash flows and uh, then you have the real business model so often uh, in the green world they speak about business models when it comes to the values of green but the, there are no models yet it's not rounded yet it's not finished yet because they only show the value but it doesn't show how you can get the revenue streams in and that's the final part that we have to solve and i think that's very yeah, that's only now starting to evolve. Yeah, for example, uh, the real estate. We know that uh, trees have uh, uh, have influence on the real estate value of uh, houses, uh, but still, it's not possible to uh, uh, to to get trees funded while uh, as you buy a, a house, for example. Once you can do that, then all of a sudden, trees have real value. So that's, for example, a pilot that we are trying uh, to see if we can get uh, uh, trees uh, linked, directly linked to um, houses and that you can buy a house combined with a, with a tree, like a, a garage uh, uh, box, so to speak. Because I think when we think about tree care, we're, we're familiar with the high costs of tree care. Um, it's, it's, it's even seen as kind of a lucrative business because the cost of tree care can be so high. At the same time, you know, the science is showing us all of these different values of trees. These values of trees we can then express in euros or in dollars. And then that third part, indeed, is that revenue piece that we're missing. So how are, you, how are you using technology and specifically how are you using blockchain technology to solve that problem? Um, yeah, that's, that's the huge, uh, I think the huge potential that you have uh, because when the value of the trees is so big uh, that, we, that we can make it with this uh, system, we think we have a, a lead to get those values actually uh, making them work to enhance more green in the cities. So if, if, people, um, if people value green more and some people, they, they need those uh, euros, they have to see it in euros, then they value the trees more and they are more, uh, yeah, they, they want to have more trees around. They, they see it as a good investment. And, and that's one of the reasons why I think it's important uh, that we, um, yeah, that we that we plant more trees in cities. Um. Yeah, so we're we are not uh, completely finished with this. Uh, so we don't know exactly how it can uh, really work, but we are trying to 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 test all kinds of situations and show to people how it can work. So, for instance, what I just said uh, about um, the the housing. Um, in, we, what we can do is uh, identify the trees in front of the house while it's being built, uh, a newly built house. We can identify the tree, create a token of it, and uh, combine it uh, with uh, the, the, how do you say, it, the papers of the house. And then uh, once you buy the house, then you can see, ah, th these are the tokens of the trees that I bought together with them. And then, uh, then you can start just think about, can I add trees to it? Uh, can I add tokens to it? And can I add value to it? And then all of a sudden you have a concrete value of the trees. People are really willing to pay a certain amount of money for a tree. And uh, now most of the trees are public. So we don't know what people are willing to pay for it. And in this instance, then all of a sudden it becomes very tangible what people are willing to pay for it. And if you do that in various situations, so in each real estate development, right. you can learn about what people are willing to pay for the green. Then all of a sudden, for uh, the the tax, uh, the, the 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 people who value the the property, uh, it becomes clear that uh, if they place trees, they can sell the trees straight away. So then it can it can be be financed together uh, with the real estate, for example. So, and if you have this parallel then you can go for example to uh how do you say it uh, business parks uh yeah. if you can uh show to uh, or you can uh, can sell um business park or green, uh, <laughs> trees on business parks together with uh, the real estate and companies are willing to pay for it a certain amount and you have that blockchain technology to follow the value of the trees then you can uh, then you have a benchmark, and then uh, the the the, tr the value of the tree is all of a sudden uh, in euros at least it's uh, tangible. So we are trying several pilots. 
uh, for example, also in uh, here in Rotterdam at the floating farm. There we've put uh, trees in the in the field and cows. They uh, appear that uh, cows. Uh, uh, produce more milk if they are in a pleasant environment, just like people. Uh, cows are by origin uh, forest animals. Uh, and uh, research already showed that if uh, cows are uh, under less pressure from heat and in a more forestry-like, uh, forestry-rich uh, environment, that they produce more milk. So that's what we wanted to test at the floating farm. So we have the, the cows, we have certain cows, we have tag, we've put the tag on their neck and we've uh, um, put a uh, sensor in the trees. And now we can monitor which, which cows are coming close to the trees and if they produce more or, uh, more milk than, uh, than before, than before the trees were there. So uh, then all of a the sudden, then you have a... If that's the case, that's going to drastically that's change the look of the Dutch landscape. Uh, so far, yeah, but we we have to um, we want to continue our research uh, next year because now the sun is uh, not so very yeah. <laughs> so not so very present anymore. So next uh, summer we hope that we can in, in meadows, uh, add yeah. data to it. But it's uh, observations now learn that uh, the cows are all uh, are going uh, straight out when the sun starts shining. They all go outside and immediately walk to the to the shadow places and they're all there they're all concentrated on these shadow places that's really cool to see uh, and now we want to see the data if they also produce more milk because if they do then we also have the business model and then all of a sudden we have a business model to put more green more trees in uh, in the fields of the farmers uh, so that's how we try to test uh, that's fascinating but willem i'd love to hear from you again kind of as an urban forester why why are you so interested and perhaps fascinated by this role that technology can play in better valuing trees and and why why blockchain technology specifically because there's so many of these new emerging technologies that we could perhaps use to to better perhaps better monitor and also better um, map the values of trees. So why blockchain? Because I know that that's a technology that I mean you're already trying to do something difficult, which is helping people understand the value of trees. And then you also had blockchain on top of that, which most people elicits a very scared reaction. So um, why, why blockchain? And and perhaps also for the people at home, um, can you just explain in layman's terms what blockchain means to you? Um, yeah. Okay. Um... We, we see uh, when we explain what we do with Tree Collective, we see a lot of people go, go blank just because, this, because of this, the value of trees and blockchain. Uh, but why blockchain? Um, blockchain has the potential to uh, register uh, the value of stuff. Um, and like a blockchain is, um, is an, uh, uh, because the value of trees has to be registered somewhere. We have to start registering it. And then you come, where do you register? Do you register it? Um, then blockchain comes in. Blockchain is a good way to register value and do that for a lot of, if you want to have a lot of things registered in something, then you can use blockchain. Um, and that's the one of the reasons why we see that combination and that, that we think that combination might work. Um, because you actually can say, um, because you have registered the value of trees on blockchain, um, yet then you can say to other parties, um, the value is there. Um, and that's one thing why, why we try to do that. And like, um, we don't see the blockchain as a, a system to uh, calculate the value of trees or something. We see it just to register the value that is calculated with other systems. Uh, and you can add values. You can also add not only the uh, like the i tree values or the ecosystem values. You can also add the value of uh, the what is the tree, um, what is the worth of the tree when you want to replace it. That's also a value that is calculated. So you can add that value, and. Uh, blockchain gives the possibility to add those values and also give. Um, uh, you can monitor uh, if the, your investment uh, is still there and you can also register that on blockchain. And that, the, uh, that are the values of blockchain. Yeah. 
And if I can add to that, uh, yeah, the, the, one of the most important things also is that you can uh, rearrange ownership. So a lot of trees are now on public grounds. Um, and um, you could also think about transferring the ownership to the people and maybe not the property of maybe not the, the soil, but you, you could uh, you could split you can split it and that you can you can you have smart contracts for that and in these smart contracts you can say uh, he or she becomes an owner of this tree but it's not a real owner it's a usage a usage of the tree and um, uh, he pays a certain amount of money for it or he maintains it or and that's all that can all be registered in uh, in a contract and once you leave the place, for example, if the person leaves the place, then you can transfer this, um, uh, uh, these rights and, and the contracts very easily. And you don't have to go to a, a legal office or whatever to have all these uh, things uh, rearranged. So uh, it's also a matter of transferring ownership. And we don't know what the potential completely is, but we know it's it, it can be there quite big also if you go to uh, systems like uh, the green bonds, yeah, for, uh, if you go to a green bond, then it can really help if you can identify the trees and have them checked uh, on a blockchain that uh, this tree is, is in, uh, indeed the, the certain tree that you're talking about. So if you invest money in a tree, that you know the money is really going in that tree. And now you have this old, so yeah, that can uh, that can be a, a benefit as well. So this uh, whole ownership thing is uh, can be uh, very interesting. And it's another way of funding trees in the, in the future. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, that's right. You you can fund one tree with like uh, ten people, uh, because of they can all buy a, a mini token, and so they can fund one tree. But you can also have like a business that's more interested in the ecosystem values uh, that can buy the ecosystem value separately. It doesn't buy the tree. The tree can be owned and maintained by someone else, but the company buys the ecosystem values. And you, that's also something you can register on blockchain in a smart contract. So it's a, if you compare it like with the CO2 programs, um, you have like uh, uh, companies that pay uh, money to plant trees for CO2 uh, storage uh, for their footprint. Um, this would be like a, a version 2.0 of that uh, because we can identify the tree and we register that tree on blockchain. And uh, so you can uh, have more precise and then more like a bank we can uh, show what the investment was and is. Well, in, in a way, you're also creating kind of this investment portfolio, right? Because this blockchain component comes at the end, whether it's that in, in registration and in storage and in perhaps splitting up the ownership after the fact. Um, but before that, of course, the most important part is actually quantifying these values of trees. And you mentioned briefly before, Willem, that you use iTree to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But for the listeners at, at home, can you just bring us through the process of first, what is iTree, but also how does one even go about quantifying the value of a single tree? Yeah, that, that's, that's a difficult uh, task because uh, what I said, trees have a lot of values, a lot of different values. And uh, those values are um, they are like um, you have some values that are easy to calculate and that those values are uh, co2 storage uh, water retention uh, pollution uh, the pollu amount of pollution a tree takes on uh, those uh, those values we can calculate with iTree and iTree is a program that uh, that roughly uh, calculates how big is a tree, how many leaves it has, and then it can calculate all those values. Um, so that helps us, but that's just a small amount of the values because we also think if we calculate, like um, uh, if you have Mark talked about more adding more trees on uh, places on business areas where people a lot of people work. Um, um, more trees means that people get less sick. So if you have only 1.0 uh, 
1.1% uh, uh, less sick people, you also have a really big value. But those values are really hard to, to calculate. For so us. the biggest uh, the biggest values are probably in, um, uh, we, we expect them to be in real estate uh, values. Uh, they can be really big and in uh, health uh, and uh, labor productivity. But uh, health and uh, health issues and influence on labor is very difficult to calculate because you have a lot of externalities, as they say. It, eh? So a lot of benefits, they just are health benefits. Uh, they come into effect only after a couple of years. Uh, and there are a lot of other influences on your health. Um, so it's very difficult to isolate the effect of the of the trees. So that's why we start with the more easy, the easiest values that we can grasp, but they're not necessarily the, the biggest values. Uh, although water becomes more and more of high value. Uh, water, water retention is becoming an issue in a lot of cities. Uh, and heat is also, the, the, the cost of uh, overheated uh, cities is also increasing. Carbon prices are also increasing. So. We think also from that perspective that trees are an extremely good investment because all those effects will become bigger and the prices will become higher of those uh, effects. So um, yeah, the, the value of the trees, I think it's a very good investment now to, 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 to go into trees because the, the, the benefits will only increase from now on. That much is clear. We should make that very clear. The best investment you can make is planting trees. <laughs> yes, <it's> true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, an yeah. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, when, when I first when I, when I first studied uh, uh, the value of the trees, it was uh, very. Uh, I found it really astonishing that people talk about subsidies when it comes to green and investment when it comes to grey, and actually we should try to start to uh, turn it around and say trees are an investment and uh, grey is like a well. Let's let's touch on that for a second, because let, let's touch on kind of changing that mindset, because indeed, Mark, you say that quite well. When you talk about green, you talk about subsidies. When you talk about buildings and bridges and roads, we talk about investment. So um, in how, how can we start talking about trees in the sense that there is an ROI, there is that return on investment? What 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 is the ROI associated with trees? Yeah, that's all incorporated in the in the function. So if you, if you, I also say that you should make green plants in another way, so that you have to look much more about the, what function can this green have at a certain site, very site specific. What is the the biggest function green can have at that site, and from there you you can uh, see it as an asset because it produces certain values and benefits for the environment. And when it's an asset, you can also um, uh, put it different in your in, on the balance sheet. So I think Amsterdam started it to uh, spread the investment in green in uh, like uh, three years. But I would say it can be even more years because a lot of trees, when you invest in them, the benefits uh, become higher and higher. Uh, and after a certain period, they decline, but it takes uh, decades. So um, I think, uh, yeah, also from an accountant's point of view, you should see it as an asset. And that already brings down the cost of a tree. So I think in this whole value and pricing thing, we should we should stack all the different values of the trees. And I think in due time that the value of the trees will become net positive. So even while maintaining maintaining them, uh, they will become net positive. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's our aim for also with the tree collective. Yeah. If that happens. How, how does that affect your how does that affect your role as an urban forester yeah now that that really comes together to what i was wanting to add because um, um i think uh, we as urban foresters should uh, leave uh, managing trees but uh, manage uh, we start uh, we have to start with managing ecosystem uh, values and so um, if you have uh, all those values of trees um, and you have like a city full of trees uh, you have to look at which places are uh, uh, have extra heat issues or which places have extra uh, water issues and then manage on those things. And you can do that. One of the things you have is trees. You can use trees there. And that has to be a, 
uh, yeah, next step, I think, in urban forestry. Um, yeah, we, we have to see it as a as how it's titled. It's one big forest in the city and not as an individual tree. Speaking of individual trees, because that is the level that you're currently tagging trees, um, how I, I read a really interesting case study that you guys are doing in a cemetery in Hilversum, a little ways outside of Amsterdam. Um, how how does how does tree collective play into cemeteries? Yeah, that that is a, uh, was like a sidestep uh, because the, that was um, um, I was working there I, as an urban forester. I also did the cemeteries, and then they wanted to. Uh, make a natural cemetery so a cemetery without stones or graves but only with trees and that's why we uh, i said now uh, i am doing uh, stuff with tree collective with identifying single trees and registering them maybe we can use the system uh, for registering the graves of the peoples so those trees are now in tree collective and they are, uh, yeah, the trees are connected to a, a, a person who is buried there. That, that's how uh, it goes in there. And also you add value, uh, the, you have like the ecosystem values of the trees and you add those, um, yeah, that's a benefit you have uh, next to the, the, yeah, next to the, uh, this, uh, how do I say it? Um, next to that, the tree is the, the, the identifier of the grave. I hope I, uh, I make myself clear. <laughs> but... Right. No, so it sounds like um, Tree Collective, like like any good, uh, like I think Tree Collective, like any good. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it was a bit of, of, it was a bit of a lucky or coincidence that this all came together and we're not exactly sure if the blockchain technology is essential uh, here maybe a database could work here as well so we always try to see what's the stretch of uh, and the use of the blockchain because that's not our purpose the blockchain is not our purpose the purpose is to increase the value and if if blockchain technology is necessary then we'll use it um, so and we'll have to see with uh, for example also floating farm if every time we look at it and say uh, is blockchain here necessary to scale or to enable the value in? and if it is then we we use it and in the case of the cemetery we are not pretty we're not convinced that uh, the blockchain technology there is necessary but but still we we did find a business case or created a business case for uh, more green on cemeteries yeah? And uh, I don't care if people use the blockchain technology or not, but uh, I want to show to other people that it can be profitable to have more green on your cemetery. So on every place where they, where more green is possible, I think it's important for us to show it. Yeah, the, the cemetery has a good uh, business case. Yeah, and I think that's a good that's a good marker of a successful startup in a way, right? Being lean and being flexible to see where these different business cases take you, what the different potential might be for your technology. And that's clear that you've tested out in a variety of settings, whether that's on a floating farm in Rotterdam, looking at what the, trying to green the floating farm and then seeing that relationship with cow's milk production versus having that ownership of the trees be transferred to your real estate contracts and then perhaps having there be a business case in terms of a natural cemetery. So it's clear that um, there's all these different potential applications. Um, but if I ask you guys, you know, which one is the one that you're most excited about for the future, where do you hope to focus on? <laughs> yeah, very good question. <laughs> I think the biggest one is the one related to uh, blockchain technology can be uh, really uh, helpful is uh, two things. I think in the investment part, so going more in the direction of tokenizing. Tomorrow we have an extensive meeting with some experts on it and we'll, uh, we'll see what, uh, what kind of business case comes from there. But I expect that if we have a way to tokenize uh, trees, then you can tap into a whole different era, a whole new era of uh, people willing to invest in a token that's really sustainable. So I think that will be, uh, that's a very uh, big uh, potential, but we'll see, uh, we'll learn very soon. 
uh, because we, we know we have certain ideas on how to get it running, uh, especially with all the, the projects we already did, but we have to make it more in a uh, uh, in a solid business case. So I think that's uh, one of the biggest, um, um, I think that can have a very big impact. Uh, and of course, the, 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 the real estate uh, applications that can, can be of real, uh, real importance. And I think in due time, uh, what we're also trying to do uh, is that people get a different relation to the to the green, and that's a side effect, but very important, so that people start to v uh, have a like they used to have much more feeling that the tree is very useful to them, and uh, we go through the money, but on the long run, we hope that it's uh, not longer necessary to say to, to to show what the value of a tree is, but people simply know, oh, we put the tree here. We know it's beneficial. We know it has value, and we don't have to talk about it anymore. So that's uh, that's what we aim for. But I think we have to go through this phase of uh, making it uh, much more apparent uh, what the functions of those trees or the, of the green can uh, can be. Yeah, and also if you if you take like all the trees of the city of Amsterdam and you register them all on blockchain and you make those values uh, visible uh, through adding them to blockchain, you have like one big asset. And then it's for everyone, it's a lot clearer that it is an investment to add trees. It's really different than like now you have all the trees in a system, it's just for managing them, but it's not a, a system to register the value. Yeah, it's... And that's strange. Yeah, it's... Um... Because the city of Amsterdam also has like, like a lot of buildings, but those buildings are all valued and all registered, they have a value. But the trees, they don't because you won't uh, register them on the same way as they do buildings. So that, that are the big prospects we see. So, so like that blows my mind that again, that we're in almost in 2022 and that we're still not doing that. So, I mean, how, how can we make that happen tomorrow? What's, what's the big bottleneck here? That we, in, in potential, we, we could, uh, with our system, we could uh, transfer all the trees of the city of Amsterdam to, to blockchain uh, next week. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. The, the, system, <laughs> the system is ready. The system is there. And, and the, all the trees of Amsterdam are yeah. already in a system. Just, you just have to get the coordinates out and, the, and the, how big they are. And uh, yeah, you can you can register them on blockchain and then they are like valued. They have a value when they are on blockchain. Yeah. So, um, but it's a very interesting, uh, yeah, I think, but it's a very interesting question. Uh, Nadine, I think Nadina, I think it's the, but it, the world is changing in that respect that uh, more and more investors are also looking for real green investments or, uh, and, and it, pension funds are changing a bit so every everything is moving in the direction of more and more green and i think we're close to a tipping point if we have a breakthrough in how you can make it uh, 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 tangible uh, valuable and traceable uh, and at the same time you have the money coming in from investors then you might have you might be at a tipping point that it goes really uh, really fast so uh, and i think we are we're looking at it and it might happen uh, if you can change that. Uh, if you have that breakthrough in the system, then it can go really fast. So that's my optimum, the, 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 the optimistic uh, view on it. The pessimistic view is that uh, uh, the, the, the big tree uh, managing part, uh, people uh, uh, won't, uh, won't stand for it and won't, uh, uh, won't go for it. So. Uh, uh, then you, you still need the municipality of Amsterdam or uh, or another big player to uh, to have their green uh, um, uh, sites uh, on the blockchain registered. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, so you need some system changes as well. So uh, and it's a big like you already said, uh, Nadine. It's a, it's our big two big really topics. Uh, the value of trees and blockchain. So it's hard to sell for a lot of times. People don't understand it. Uh, but what Mark said, it's going the right direction. But we sometimes say to each other, I think we are five, five, five or 10 years ahead. Uh, yeah, because so also we hope uh, that we that's, that we catch up. 
but also the blockchain is changing now and eh? so more uh, crypto currency is now much more common than uh, when we started cryptocurrency was like uh, you were crazy if you would step into bitcoin so uh, that's also changed uh, since we started so blockchain uh, still blockchain technology is still on, pretty unknown uh, but cryptocurrencies are moving yeah towards a much broader audience so that's changing as well um, so all these things are now uh, moving, but we started five years ago, and at that time we were, yeah, we were at, uh, probably way too early, because we always had to explain or even uh, defend why we would use blockchain technology and not just a database or whatever. So, uh, and I hope that discussion uh, will finish soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I, I can imagine it's a hard sell especially when you're dealing with a sector like arboriculture and urban forestry, which of course by nature is like ecology, a pretty traditional sector and not definitely one that's been, you know, welcoming technology with open arms. So that's why it's also great to see real urban foresters like Willem who are, you know, have their, their hands, their arms spread ready to embrace technology and how it might help not as some kind of techno optimistic end goal, but as a tool to help us get to the green cities that we want. Yeah, I think it also has a big potential for, for urban forestry industry. It, it's an opportunity for urban forestry uh, business because, uh, yeah, they they can manage the urban forest and have another business model. They, they can deliver ecosystem values and they have to see it like that. Uh, but that's a long way to go. And, and urban forestry uh, companies, they have to think about uh, like taking ownership of trees and sell ecosystem values and other values of trees. Uh, not just managing trees, but say like, for instance, to the city of Amsterdam, uh, these uh, uh, parts of Amsterdam, I, I will take the ownership of the trees and I will sell you the ecosystem values. That, that's how we see it, but that's future talk. But that, that's the way I think urban forestry businesses should look at the future. Yeah, and uh, also from, um, so you mentioned that uh, the, in, the, in, the, in the green business, uh, technology is not that much uh, applied. Uh, the same holds for the economic part. So, so I, before uh, I, I dove into this whole green uh, business, I uh, used to work a lot in the creative industry as an economist, and I always always felt that I was playing a uh, a, a game at uh, somebody else's territory. And uh, the same applies a bit to the green uh, world. So uh, the econ economists are not very uh, there. There are not many out there. And talking about values, most of the green pe people working in green are intrinsically motivated to work with green, which is great. Um, but sometimes it helps if you can also make it tangible and uh, and talk about what it can, what the values can be for 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 the economy. Then because then it can it can really add to more green. Uh, in, in, in total, so economy is still part of the uh, of society, <laughs> and, and then it helps if they they are on your side and thinking along on how to uh, make it uh, not a, not only a cost uh, a look at it, but also the, the revenue side of it. So. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think that's the beautiful thing, right, that Tree Collective is trying to do is bring urban greenery trees into that economic discussion so that it doesn't have to live outside of it, that actually can be part of the current economic system that we have and be valued as such. And I think, you know, that that in itself is controversial, but I personally believe that that's the way forward. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty simple in the urban environment at this moment. Uh, that we, we still we have less and less space in the cities and uh, we are fighting uh, with green for a place for energy transition take, uh, takes up a lot of space. Uh, we have mobility issues, uh, but for all these other transitions, we have uh, calculated models. So we know how much uh, cost, uh, how much savings we have if people travel faster from A to B. We know uh, how much uh, cost it will save if we have a battery for the energy transition, but we don't know what it 
will bring if we put a tree there. So a tree always loses because now still it loses. It just costs money while the other things bring money, although that's not the case, but we just don't know. And therefore, if we want more trees in the cities on the long run, we need to know uh, what the benefits are. We are also like uh, uh, differentiating the investment on trees. Eh? So if you want to have a nice, healthy tree in the city, you have to invest uh, maybe 4,000, 5,000 euros. That's the investment you want to make. Instead of a, a tree in a field where the cows are, then the investment is maybe 500 euros or less. Uh, but that also is a value aspect. That's the one thing I wanted to add. So... Uh, yeah, no, and I think that that's true. I think we people don't realize that what what it takes in terms of both human and financial resources for a tree to become successful in a city. And again, if we're not valuing the benefits that that tree adds, then that's something that can get lost in the equation quite quickly. And you will also plant differently if you know how much a, a tree uh, brings in value. So you will really make sure that it's, it grows most optimum, uh, most optimum uh, that the ecosystem is most optimized for the tree to, to, bring, uh, to bring its uh, ecosystem benefits. So uh, yeah, the more we know about that, uh, the, the notion is about it, the more we will plant in, in that way, I think. And uh, if people listen to the podcast and want to get in touch with either of you or Tree Collective, where can they do so? Yeah, just go to uh, treecollective.com uh, uh, dot and um, you'll, uh, you'll find our, uh, our details. Uh, Mark Boda for more like the value business part of it, economic part of it. And Willem, uh, if you want to know more about the urban forestry part of it, so that's. Uh, but we uh, we're both, um, you know, we can both uh, find our contact details over there. So um, that's easy. <laughs> I think it wasn't uh, available. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's time to get the dot com. Who knows? No, it was already uh, taken. Otherwise, we would have had it. We're still a startup, so yeah, it was. We should, we had, we had to buy it, uh, and we didn't have the money at the time. It's pro that domain has probably yeah, been yeah. snatched. <laughs> <laughs> and our website will be uh, renewed very soon. Yeah, tree collective. Tree, tree yeah. collective. <laughs> And uh, the last question that I ask all of my guests who come on to the show, uh, we'll start with Mark and then we'll end with Willem, just to get that up front. Um, the question is, what does the Internet of Nature mean to you? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't uh, prepare that uh, question, but uh, I'm always very uh, triggered by the, the Internet of Nature as a... As a term or a sentence or a definition uh, because I think if you look at uh, all the trees if the trees would all be connected then all of a sudden you see so much more potential than we were just talking about uh, with the tree collective and then you can start to think about how we connect in a true technology much more with uh, with nature and what kind of experiences can that bring you know and I think if I think about that, then it's mind boggling. If you have your fantasy running about it, then it's, uh, yeah, you can think about uh, ga different games, real life games, uh, 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 educational programs uh, around trees in your area, um, nursery of the trees uh, in your neighborhood. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, so there, there's so much potential still to, uh, to have other, to have new. Uh, concepts, business models, whatever, uh, businesses to, to work around uh, nature. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that Internet of Nature uh, and as such is uh, very intriguing. Yeah, and, uh, for me, it's also, um, I also, the Internet of Nature is in the, the when I hear that phrase, I, I think it's the potential of technology uh, to help us understand nature in a better way and also uh, see the value of it in a different way and uh, making that value more visible. That could be a really big power of uh, technology, internet, uh, and that we need that still because there are still a lot of people in this world that don't see the value of the, the nature and don't see the, uh, yeah, 
they don't believe we need it, but uh, I'm still convinced that we should invest a lot more in nature. So that's, uh, that's what it means for me. How great would it be, uh, Willem, eh? if you have your, uh, if you have your phone, people are checking all the time the, the stock exchanges, but what if they would check all the time how their, how the trees are growing? You know? Yeah. Yeah. How, how much carbon did I, did I, did I, uh, how much carbon did I get yeah. out of the air? How much pollution? Yeah. Yeah. And then gamify it, you know, and see uh, how much better your portfolio did uh, compared to mine, uh, because you took better care of it. I mean, yeah, I got, I got uh, so many, I got so much trees exhaust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, the inspiration is there from other sectors. I agree. It's just a matter of, of applying yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's all when I think you said that as well once, uh, Nadina, then it's now also about how can all these technologies come together and, uh, yeah, really improve each other because I think still a lot of technologies are developed at the moment on their own. Well, the, 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 probably the real power is in the combination of it. So, uh, I agree. So, yeah. Well, I think that's a hopeful place to yeah. end it on. So with that, I want to thank you both very much for coming yeah. on. Yeah. Thank you very You're much, welcome. Nadina, for having us. Yeah. Really, uh, I really like Big it. thanks to Mark and Willem for making the time to come on the show. If you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast now and leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate it and it really helps us to grow the show. I want to give a big thank you to this show's sponsor, the International Society of Aboriculture. If you want to learn more about some of the most topical issues in the aboricultural industry and network with industry experts and peers, we invite you to attend the ISA 2022 International Conference in Malmö, Sweden, from the 12th to the 14th of September. More information and how to register can be found at www.isa-arbor.com. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Internet of Nature podcast. This show is an NA Media production.